UC. UC. And so we thank God. We thank God, you know, for this season. And if you have your Bible, turn with me to Mark, the fifth chapter. Uh, many people have inquired about the third, uh, what is it, Saturday or Sunday, the church picnic. Uh, they want to know what time. And so, um, um, I'll let you know, you know, what time in advance. You know, and a lot of people, what time is it? What time is it? You know, um, you're going to know what time. You don't have to rush that information like that. Uh, I, we, I'm constantly looking, you know, uh, uh, at the weather. I'm const and even though the weather man, God make a fool out of him, and a, and a fool out of the weather woman, and a fool out of their technology. They say rain, God say no rain. They say sun, God say shade. They say shady, God say sun. And so, such an unusual time that I haven't been quick to name a time. For the church picnic you know um no matter what you say for some people it's going to be too early other people too late you know you're dealing with people but nevertheless um you know next saturday is the church picnic and um or gathering you know you know some people don't like the word picnic uh, so june 19th whenever june 19th is uh, that's a church um, picnic or gathering. You know, you have those blacks that believe picnic means pick a nick or pick a nigga. And so they don't like that term. So the church gathering, uh, I believe is uh, the, the 19th. We'll give out a time uh, in time for you to prepare yourself. And um, where it's not too early and definitely not too late, okay? But the best thing about it is we have it. We've rented it. It's our space. And so no one can take it. And if someone is there, we can ask them to leave. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Mark, the fifth chapter. And thank God for Jesus. Thank God for all who, you know, we have not missed, to my knowledge, we haven't missed one Sunday of church uh, since the uh, pandemic or the plague or the virus. Even though um, it was a couple of weary Sundays, you know, don't get me wrong, but we have not missed a Sunday. Um, it's important that we haven't missed and that we've been strong. Uh, we have not lost a church member to death by way of COVID or, or, or any other um, situation. Uh, um, believe me, that's... Um, that's a that's a wonderful thing because people have lost double digit church members including leadership you you really should not take for granted um what god is doing um it's so important to not take that for granted it's just so important um and so um you know we it, we it, god has been good to us uh, please acknowledge he's been good to you. Uh, even, you know, those that, um, you know, that, that have family members in need of prayer and you're interceding um, for, you know, for your family and your wife and your, and your, your uncle and your cousin or, you know, your aunt and, um, on your wife's side of the family who has multiple people who pass, you know, um, it's important to be mindful of how good God has been to this church. And, uh, and, and that faithfully, you know, we have trusted him over a year of this, trusted him. Uh, some people, they, they don't know how to stay connected to the vine we are the branches he is the vine um and so hopefully you know just us covering them you know 
They may not respect it or even understand how important leadership is. Um, you know, because we can't have a situation that by scripture, the whole head is sick. You know, when the whole head is sick, then the body is sick. So you can't have sick leadership and sick heads. You know, that's why I feel for women who have sick husbands, not physically, but mentally and spiritually. Because the, when, the, when the whole head is sick, you know, the body suffers. You know, it suffers. And so we, so, so be mindful, no matter what you see, you know, to thank God for how good he has been. In Mark, the fifth chapter, two through 15, and God help us now, do a little reading here. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb, immediately. In, immediately they met him out of the tombs. It's important to be instant, in season, out of season. Immediately, he has an encounter. Immediately, no time to get prayed up. Got to be prayed up. No time to get praised up. Got to be praised up. Immediately, they met him out of the tombs. A man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains because that he had often bound with feathers and chain and, 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 and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the feathers broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not, for he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is his name? What is thy name? And he answered, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils besought him, all of them besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And they were about 2000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it to the city and in the country. And they went out to the sea what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. And had the legion, they see him sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid we're going to use for a theme this morning my god of my mental health my god of my mental health it's not just the god but he's my god and he's my god of my mental health I know we have left May, and and I and I thank God, you know, that we've left May. You know, for me, May is a is a trying time, and I thank God for May being over. No disrespect to anyone's birthday or anything or whatever, but I just thank God May it May is over. But the spirit of May lingers in terms of 
mental health. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And the spirit of it is lingering. And God is concerned about the mental health of his people. He is very concerned about the mental health of his people. You know, even in this past year, when so many different Christians would, would tell me how perplexed and stressed they were and full of anxiety, I would just challenge them as to why. Like, why? Like, it's just, and, they, and, and many responses would be, because, because there's a lot going on. There's just so much going on. Well, first, I want you to know something without, you know, a lot of things are a sign of spiritual immaturity, no disrespect, and fear. It, I, it doesn't matter to me, uh, like, uh, how long people have been in a church or how long people say they've been saved. Words are spirit and life. And it's not what go in a man that defile him is what come out of him. Uh, open your mouth, as the world says, you relieve all doubt. Or open your mouth and there's no more doubt. We now know you. When you open your mouth, we know you. And it's been too many, I mean, especially people who've been saved a long time, full of anxiety, full of fears or having fear-based conversation. If you're having fear-based conversations, you have a fear-based mindset. Fear is always in opposition to faith. It's always an enemy of faith. And it's the house of God, the, the church, as far as the house of God, has been infiltrated, you know, by people who would be clinically diagnosed with mental health disorders. You know, that they have major challenges from the neck up. Many times and oftentimes we know the mind is the battlefield. You know, even the, the article I read, according to the, natural, the National Alliance of Mental Health, it said approximately one in five adults in the United States, and that's church people included, experiences mental illness each year. One in five adults in the United States. That's a lot of people that, it, that they experience mental illness each year. At least 7% of Americans, American adults, had at least one major depressive ex episode in the past year, and more than 18% experienced an anxiety disorder. In addition, more than 1% of adults in the US live, not, it don't come and go, they live every day, live with schizophrenia, which is a long-term mental disorder of a type involving a breakdown in the relation between thought, emotion, and behavior. Remember, I always say there's a psychology to Christendom. Psychology to Christendom. Mind, will, and emotion. Iatry, the study of. There's a psychology to Christendom. There's a study of the mind, will, and emotion by scripture. That's why as a man thinketh, so is he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatever things are pure, honest, just, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We're constantly being taught about the psychology of Christendom. Yet, the breakdown in relation between thought, emotion, and behavior leading to faulty perception, inappropriate actions, and feelings, withdrawal from reality and personal relationships, withdrawal, 
into fantasy and delusion and a sense of mental fragmentation where data and memory is broken up into many pieces that are not close together. When you look at, 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 at that breakdown and see that they live there, they don't come and go, that's what they dwell. Around 2.6% in the United States live with bipolar disorder, characterized by both manic and depressive de episodes or manic ones only. A disorder associated with episodes of mood swings ranging from depressive lows to manic highs to extremely busy, frenetically busy, frantic, wild, overly excited highs. And they live there. And science is saying, and, so, and, and many of them that we see attend some church. They, 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 they say they have some faith. We also have to deal in, with, in the, U, in the United States, rare mental disorders, like Stendhal syndrome, where those affected experience physical and emotional anxiety, anxiety was our feelings of tension, worry, thoughts, and physical changes that, that increase blood pressure and affect the body, as well as panic attacks, dissociative experiences, confusion, and hallucinations when exposed to art or large amounts of art in a museum or gallery. This is called Stendhal syndrome, which is a rare mental disorder, but it is in America. There's another one called apotemnophilia or body integrity identity, which is a rare mental disorder in America, which is characterized by the overwhelming desire to amputate or cut off healthy parts of the body. This disorder is believed to be neurological. Many attempt to amputate their own healthy limbs or damage them to the extent where surgical amputation is now necessary. So they actually hurt themselves to the point that that limb can't be saved. Now you must cut it off. There's another rare mental disorder called alien hand syndrome, characterized by the belief that one's hand does not belong to oneself, but that it has its own life. They have normal sensation in the hand, but believe the hand to be autonomous, exiting independently and on its own, and has a will of its own and its own agenda and is not controlled by the one who the hand is attached to. That the hand does whatever it wanna do in spite of what, I'm what I wanted to do, the hand is autonomous. There's another rare mental disorder called Cap Capgris syndrome, where those affected hold delusional belief that someone in their life, usually a spouse, a close friend or family member, has been replaced by an imposter. So imagine waking up to someone staring at you with Capgris syndrome, thinking you are not my wife, you're not my husband, you are not my brother, you are not my sister, you, you are an imposter. Imagine the threat that they represent. There's another rare mental disorder called Alice in Wonderland or Todd syndrome, which is considered a, neuro a neurological condition in which a patient's sense of body image, space and or time is distorted. They may suffer from hallucinations, sensory distortion and an altered sense of velocity or the rate of change of one's position. 
and it's in America as well. And these mental health disorders have found themselves in many churches and they're comfortable. I always say when, when an unsaved loved one come to your home or, run it, or, or, or come into your presence, the spirit on them should be uncomfortable. When your family can come around you with their, with their, with, with their adulterous relationship, when your family could come around you with that habit, with that lust, that perverted tendency, comfortable around you with that masturbation and porn and comfortable around you with that addiction, comfortable around you with that potty mouth, that filthy language and nasty talk, call you on the phone and just speak like a like they like they don't even care about they're on the phone with a Christian. It's because one, you allow it. Two, you lack an anointing that forces them to respect you. And when they infiltrate our churches where there's no heavy anointing and it's comfortable. Remember when Paul got the fire hot or too hot. It was only then that that snake pit viper jumped out and bit him or manifested or, ex or, or exposed himself. There must be a fire that, that make the unclean spirits un, 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 uh, uncomfortable. Now you may say, well, why are you talking about unclean spirits and mental health in the same breath. Do you not know King Saul suffered from what would be called today clinical depression? He had got so depressed in, 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 in um, uh, uh, I think 1 Samuel 16, maybe about 1 Samuel 16, he had got so depressed that, that, that people worried about him. The people around him worried about him. He was so depressed. And as a matter of fact, 1 Samuel 16, 14 says, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Listen to this. The spirit of the Lord in 1 Samuel 16, 14 left Saul, left King Saul. God left King Saul. His spirit departed from him. He left him to himself. And an evil spirit, the Bible says, from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God is troubling you. You know, something wrong with you, King Saul. You can't see it, but an evil spirit from the Lord troubling you. Like, or you trouble because of an evil spirit from the Lord. Now, now, you know, you read and we have read and said that let no man say when he's tempted of evil, he tempted of God, for God cannot tempt any man with evil. You see? The NLT says, now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. So clinically, today he would be someone labeled with a mental disorder and suffered from depression and fear. Now, now, now what I believe is that it wasn't so much God sending an evil spirit to him as much as it was God just lifting his presence and, and that spirit that could not touch him was now able to touch him. I believe this because when his when the people around him saw him tormented, they wanted to help him. And they knew the only way to help him was to bring someone in that God was on. So they said, let us get a boy named David for you. David, this, there's a boy named David who is cunning with the harp. And he plays the harp so beautiful. Can we get him for you? And Saul said, oh, bring him to me. Go get him. 
This man going to play the harp with his hand and you're going to be you're going to be fine after that. Let us get him into let us get him. And when and when they brought David before him. And David began to play that harp. The Bible says he played with his hand. The anointing was in his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well and the evil spirit departed from him. When I read that, I knew that if God himself placed the evil spirit on him, that it don't matter what those people wanted, God would not allow his servant to then go against what God was doing. What God does sometimes is give us over to the thing we won't let go or give us over to the thing that's around us because, because we won't get it right. You know, we like there are things that are that standing afar off waiting for each one of us to slip or fall. The Bible said that that, that, that the devil stands afar off and wait for a more opportune time. Every one of us got a got a got a spirit, uh, 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 something that watch our life waiting for a more opportune time, waiting to to try to overwhelm us. Take us from God. Cause us to backslide, take us into adultery, fornication, whatever it may be, uh, uh, homosexuality, lesbian, whatever it may be. And yes, I said homosexuality, lesbianism, which is out of God, is a perverted tendency. It's a crooked tendency. It's not straight. It's crooked. Only way David can play this harp and Saul be refreshed and feel better and the evil spirit depart from him is he have to be allowed to do that. He can't just do that. You can't just fight against a move of God. That's that's why when 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 the when the man asked the prophet in the Old Testament when you talk about Balak and Balaam and when he said prophesy against uh, uh, God's people for us prophesy bad things against them prophesy for us he said wait a minute I can't curse whom God have blessed I can't I can't say what you say and say I cannot curse whom God have blessed. I can't curse who the shout of the king is among them. I can't curse who God have blessed. I can't prophesy over God's people curses and, 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 and whom God have blessed. I can't do that. I can't go against God. That's why you that's why I told you don't don't try to bind COVID. You can't bind COVID. Or, or, or blow COVID away as one pastor tried to do on TV. COVID, we bind you and we blow you away and we, we blow on you. You can't blow on COVID. God allowed COVID. That's why, that's why so many people who, who they say we got a cure now, we got a vaccination, and they got up 12 to 20,000 breakthrough cases of people totally fully vaccinated for months who catching COVID. You can't buy in COVID. But he shall be merciful to who he choose to be merciful, gracious to whom he choose to be gracious. You see, and then, and that and, and today they would say King Saul had a mental disorder, but the anointing. David had the anointing. The anointing refreshed him, made him well. God allowed it to happen because for Bible readers, you know, you you know, God allowed it to happen, and, 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 you know, as He was dealing with Saul, but the anointing refreshed him and he was well and the evil spirit departed from him when i was in london and a mother there called me and i was the only one who stayed back as, as everyone else went to go see london you know whatever they was going to see the lord wouldn't release me so the, i knew that before i left i would not be allowed to be released from the hotel uh that i had to stay in the hotel i wasn't allowed to sightsee 
and go to people's homes. We were invited to people's homes for dinner and, and, and to sightsee, and I was never allowed to go. Well, a mother there was, I, I didn't know one of the, the mothers that went with us was, had stayed back, and she called my room, and she asked me if I could come to her room. And when I got there, she said, I'm paralyzed. I can't move. And I said, you're paralyzed? She said, I'm paralyzed, man of God. I can't move. And I, I, I went to her feet. The Lord told me to get to at her feet. And as I prayed over her feet, she was able to stand up, praise the God, praise God, and begin to, to dance around and praise God and just cry. And so I said, thank, thank God, I'm, I, 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 you know, God be glorified. I went back to my room. She called me again, man of God, come back. I need you to come back. I went back to her room. She said, I'm paralyzed again. I can't move. And so I got to her feet and prayed again. And she began to praise God and weep and, and move around. And I, I said, okay, God be glorified. And I went back to my room. She called me again, said, man of God, come back. I came back to her room. She said, every time you leave, this spirit jumps on me and paralyzes me, and I cannot move. She said, it's not until you pray for me that he leaves me, but he comes every time you leave. Now, I can tell you, God was allowing this because she was in she told us, or we saw coming down, and she told us she had to stick to a strict diet and do everything right because of her underlining health issues. And she got down there and was eating everything she wanted and drinking what she wanted. <clears throat> she wasn't even able to fly back to the United States with us. The doctor said it wouldn't, she may die on the plane. And so uh, the Lord allowed her to be afflicted because of her disobedience. But he allowed me to, every time I come in, pray over her, and she would and she would get up and praise God and move around. But when I leave, every time I would leave, the spirit would come back. I won't even try to totally understand or explain it. Every time. I mean, some people may say uh, it's a hallucination. Some people may say uh, you're just perceiving that something is wrong with your body. Uh, like, you know, uh, you're just perceiving it, you know, like um, like the alien hand syndrome or something. You're just perceiving this. You're fine. They kept her there when we left. Even when you look in the Bible, at, 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 in the book of Daniel at King Nebuchadnezzar, he suffered from what would be called today madness or, 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 or mental health situation. Uh, remember Daniel? Remember he had a dream and Daniel interpreted the dream and told him that, that, that God was going to allow some things to happen to him. And a year later, God gave him over to madness to humble him. And God gave him over to it for seven years. Where he was, he became uh, insane, eating grass uh, um, like a, a cattle, and 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 his hair grew like feathers uh, of an eagle, and his nails uh, they became like claws of a bird, or his nails looked like some of these sisters' nails look today, like claws of a bird, and the hair began to grow uh, like feathers, like some of these sisters' eyelashes, like feathers. And God gave him over to that thing for seven years to humble him. Where today he would be considered someone with, with a mental health disorder. So, 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 we, so when you look in scripture at things that today would be considered a mental health disorder, It wasn't about medication, and it wasn't about, you know, uh, of living with a thing for life. It was about a move of God. It was about the anointing. And here in this passage of scripture, in Mark 5, we see in Mark 5 that, that, that immediately, that's why, that's why you have, for you all that are in ministry, 
You have to be instant, in season, out of season. You can find yourself in a situation immediately. I told my daughter, every conversation could turn into a consultation. Every time we turn around, when you and I have a conversation with people, I said, just look, daughter, how it can turn into a consultation. Every word means something. Immediately they met him out of the tombs, out of a dead place, a man. It just give us his gender. It don't give us anything but his gender, a man. But it says with an unclean spirit that today would be considered a mental disorder, an unclean spirit who lived like they living with bipolar. They living with schizophrenia who live who dwelled, uh, among, who dwelled among the tombs and no man could bind him so they couldn't strap him down and they couldn't tie him down. He would break out of it. They couldn't tame him, which means teach him to act a certain way. You know, like some of these people who are telling these people who really struggling and really having some mental challenges and really having some spiritual challenges, just pray about it. Or what is the Lord saying? The, 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 the last thing you should ask a person that is in a certain position is what is the Lord saying? How do they know what the Lord is saying? Because they can't determine their voice from God, voice from the devil. How can they pray about something that their perception is off about? How can I pray about a situation that I don't even know how to rightfully discern? You know that cop out, just pray about it. Or, or, or that question, what is the Lord saying? And then some people will begin to tell you what they perceive the Lord is saying, even though they have no clue of who is saying it. There are people right now listening to me, you have no clue sometimes of what you're hearing or who's speaking to you. You, you, you only know what it's all about once you see the fruit of it. When the fruit of it is argument, division, sleeping in separate bedrooms, physical fighting, cursing at each other, pushing on each other, scaring, scaring the children, you know, or, you know, or, 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 or pile up of bills and you know, mismanagement of money. You know, that's the only way you know what you were hearing was wrong. And some people try to justify that. The fruit of it tells you. But imagine living your life based on waiting to see the fruit to know who's talking to you. That's a dangerous situation. No man could, they can bind him or tame him. And always night and day. No peace. Always night and day. Remember, he dwells there. Always night and day. He was in the mountains, so he up. Manic, he up. And he was in the tombs, he down. He bipolar. He got low lows and high highs. He's up and he down. Always night and day. He got two polars, up and down. Always night and day. Crying and cutting himself with stones. You can walk right outside right now, pick up a rock and cut your skin to blood, to bleeding. Stones for me represent things easily accessible. You know, laptop, phones, internet, easily accessible. Some people, the last thing you need in your house is Wi-Fi. And the next last thing you need is, a, is, 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 is cable. And the next last thing you need is, is things that allow you to cut yourself. You hand your children these things and then let them go in the room and close the door. You're inviting a problem. Things need to be monitored and watched. And some of my biggest problems have come from, uh, from just single parent or, or women trying to, to, to do things by themselves. And let me tell you something, you've dad something. I, 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 I employ you to, to get as involved as possible. Some of my major problems, and no offense, have come with women who have been abused, lusted after since, since they were 10, 
touch for the first time before they even start having menstruals or, or, or in grade school. And then turn around and put their daughters in the same position. Turn around, put them in the same clothes, in the same environment, in the same position. And I would ask some of them, like, why would you do that? With what you've been through and, and, what, and what happened to you, why would you do that? What makes you think this is fine? What makes you think this is okay? And all, you hear all kinds of excuses. Where well, they little, where well, they small, where well, they this, where well, they that. They're going to be big one day. And normal is relative. You know, you put your daughter in some Daisy Dukes and a half a shirt at, at five and six and say, oh, look at you. Got a little butt back there. Well, what do you think you're teaching her? What pervs you think you're inviting into her life? Then give them things and, and let them go in the room and close the door. What do you think you're doing? You know how many teenagers and grade schoolers I've had to talk to who can't go to sleep without masturbating and watching porn? There's some of them from Christian homes. Easily cutting themselves with stones. But when Jesus saw, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. If we were together, I have you look at the one that you say, who ran and worshiped him? So you can hear some people say, the man, the man ran and worshiped him. The man ran and cried with a loud voice. The man. But this man is not allowed to talk. He like the, he like the, uh, like the, uh, like the person who says, I have a hand that's autonomous, that does what it want to do. He likes someone who has no control over his himself. man not allowed to talk the spirit speaks for him the spirit speaks out of him he ran and worshiped him he oh, cried with a loud voice and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice what have i to do with you jesus on the most high god i drew you by god that thou torment me not who the, the man not saying this so what did Jesus say to prove to you the man can't speak for himself? So if he can't speak for himself, he can't pray for himself. You can't ask him what is the Lord saying. The spirit in him is autonomous. It has taken over. Remember, you have oppression where the enemy exercising power over before we pray. You have infiltration where he now has infiltrated one's life. And then you have possession where he has taken over. He's taken over here. Some of you have allowed certain compartments of your life to be taken over by the devil. And you're blaming on things. Jesus didn't say nothing to the man, but he said, come out of the man. He ain't saying anything to the man. He says, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. So by scripture, it's an unclean spirit. That all these mental health disorders, the anointing, the true anointing, the faith once delivered to the church can deal with all these mental health disorders. Now, I know science would be offended by that, and I, I appreciate science, but Christ is the Christ is the scientist. He's not only the creator of heaven and earth, he is the master scientist. But by scripture, the anointing. The spirit said, my name is Legion, for we are many. The spirit says, I'm with legion, for we are many. It's a bunch of us in here, thousands of us in this one man. Because we have we don't have to be confined to a certain space. So, so thousands of us have filled this man. And they begin to negotiate because when a, when a lower power meets a higher power, they begin to negotiate. So they begin to negotiate. Don't just don't send us out the country. Don't send us out the country. Send us in the swine. Don't send us out the country. Jesus gave lead. Go. Get out of this man. Go. And the unclean spirits went out, entered the swine, and they ran and killed themselves. Go. 
And what I love about this, before we pray, is that once they left, once God, once they left the man, once God gets you right, not once you get it right, you can't get it right. I couldn't get it right. I was laying on the washroom floor hearing the spirit say, kill yourself, or you should never have been born. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't get it right. And I would go in my washroom and lay on the floor. We had two washrooms. And I would go lay on the floor. I had to be told, prophesied to, that it's a spirit on you and around you. Keep trying to take you into suicide. Keep asking you, why were you born? And telling you, you shouldn't be born. And trying to make you say out of your mouth, I wish I can die. And, and I cried one morning when I woke up and saw the sun come through the blinds and hit me in my face. I asked the Lord not to let me wake up. I could not help myself. Now I got so depressed. I even hate I left, ever came back to Illinois. I thought when I was in Tennessee, I should have stayed. When I was in Kentucky, I should have stayed. I never should have came back to Chicago. Now, couldn't I help myself? You can't help yourself. Because you don't even know you need help. The things you don't know, you don't know. And you have the nerve to keep on talking like you know. Once God dealt with him, once the anointing showed up, once God freed him, they saw the man who was possessed, who couldn't be tamed, that couldn't be bound, who was running and crying and cutting himself and trying to hurt himself. They saw him they, once he was once he was free of the devil. It says the word devil in scripture in 15. Once he was released of the devil and the legion, he was sitting, not running, not acting wild, not manic, not up and down, not, you know, not knocking over juice and knocking over bowls of cereal and, and tripping over the couch and, you know, and, and crashing cars and he was sitting and clothed. Now he's appropriate. He was inappropriate. Now he appropriately dressed. And in his right mind, why would the Bible use the word mind? Why would it bring psychology into this? And in his right mind, sitting appropriately clothed and in his right mind. And in his right mind. I told you all years ago, the devil after, he's after the offspring. He after the offspring. They had an article in, uh, in 2017 uh, from the United Nations or the United Kingdom that said up to 50 children a week, some as young as four, were being referred to gender reassignment specialists. Looking at themselves and saying, I'm in the wrong body. That's a mental health disorder. And as young as four, they were sent to gender reassignment specialists as young as four while the church slept and is sleeping and scared to speak out because they're scared of what the, the world would do. I shall not feel what man shall do unto me. What happened to that scripture? Now, two things, they're either afraid uh, of being persecuted or they're afraid that, that the people who keeping them in their Cadillacs and, and in their bands is going to lead a church. Someone asks you about sin in the Bible. You don't. You you don't start off the conversation by saying, uh, uh, "I just preach love and coming together." But what you think about sin? What you think about homosexuality? What you think about perversion? What you think about abortion? What you think about? You know, I just preach love. I just want love and togetherness. When God is laying a sword right down the middle of homes and a mother should be against a daughter and a father against a son, but I just want love and together and happiness. While people in your church going crazy. He's sitting clothed and in his right mind. Now we can hold a conversation. Now. 
we can have a true consultation. Now we can talk about how you got there. Now we can talk about where you are. Now we can talk about where God is sending you. Now I can say to you, pray about it. Now I can ask you, what is the Lord saying? Now we can talk. After you free of this devil, now free of these unclean spirits. Now. So many people, I want the Lord to use me with a bunch of habits and uh, unclean spirits and a bunch of behavior inconsistent with, with the anointing. Now, you got folks that ask to be licensed and ask to be ordained and ask to be part of dance ministries and ask to be part of uh, praise and worship and ask to be part of choirs. That's why choirs have so many problems. They just, it's so many of them up there with, in so many places, you know. And the enemy loved to infiltrate praise and worship. He jealous because that's that was his job before he was kicked out of heaven, you know. So he hate praise and worship. But praise and worship is the key. Not prayer. Praise and worship is the key. The anointing, the anointing and praise and worship. Dry as the harp was played, the praise and worship, the anointing, drive out those unclean spirits and give a person a few minutes of space away from the devil to, to make a godly decision. You don't tell nobody pray about something that they don't even understand. They don't even know uh, what is God saying and they all over the place. But you come in and, and begin to praise and worship God. Begin to praise and worship the Lord. Begin to praise and worship him for them while they staring at you. You go off into a praise fest and a worship fest until the anointing fall on you to look and say, go, devil, go. And I'm not saying for everyone. I'm saying for those anointed to do it. He says, come worship the Lord. Come worship the Lord. Come worship the Lord. For we are come worship the Lord, the flock that he shepherds. Hallelujah. And that can lift, lift. Come worship the Lord, for we are his people. Every hand that can lift them. The flock that he shepherds. Hallelujah. And say in the Lord with you. Come, let us sing to the Lord. And shout with joy. The enemy of the mind, the Lord with you. Who saves us. Be anxious for nothing. Let us come with thanks. The word of the Lord said. Be anxious for nothing. Joyful songs to the Lord. To have no anxiety for any reason. For it is written, be anxious for nothing. Worship the Lord. Anxiety is a sin. For we are his people. The black and shepherd. Be anxious for nothing. Anxiety, the fear of things coming, the fear of future events. Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King or other gods. So it's made in the Lord with you. He holds in his hands the depths of the Make earth, the, Lord of all time. the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him. The dry land too was formed by his hand. By his hand, come worship the Lord. For we are his people, the flock that 
hands in order. The mental state of these God Against that, 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 I can't control my vagina. I can't control my penis. It's autonomous. It does what it want to do. I can't control my hand. It does what it want to do. But say in the Lord rebuke you. My hand is not of itself, but controlled by me. If I say don't touch it, don't touch. God, you would have reached down. If I say don't reach it, don't reach. It doesn't exist independently of it all. But once again, I say amen. So no to masturbation. No. As the thunder rolls, I barely hear you whisper through the rain. No. And as your mercy falls, I'll raise my hands and praise abuse. the God who gives and takes away. But every, every spouse is one's enemy. But every time a relationship is born with family members, that's my enemy. Story. It's not really my family member, it's my enemy. I'm going to lift my hands. You are who you are. No matter where I am, you every tear of mine. You're asking our father to control the sense of body in me. You never left my side, and though my heart is torn, you come against this mental disorder of, of transgendering. Of, I'm in the wrong body. I need to be in another body. You took the blood of every child. I remember when I over that sexuality. In the your name of Jesus Christ. You come against that third party that's trying to coerce your daughter into being a lady. Trying to coerce your son into being a girl. You come against that educator that's trying to lose the virgin on your child and in, indirectly teach you perverted tendencies and perverted things. She's putting her hand on your son's shoulder. She keeps putting her hand on your daughter's shoulder trying to lose perverted tendencies. Raise my hands and praise the God who gives and Tell takes the child away. Be and I'll praise you in the storm. And I will lift my hands for you are who you are. If you turn up, no matter no where I am, up, 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 and every tear I cry, up, 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 Find that experience that will take them from the Lord. You come against the fear of being free. The fear of being free. The fear 
to be laughed at. Rise up, young man. 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 Lord, thy Lord like a man. Rise up, young man. You will need the clothes to keep your body. Body. In the name of Jesus Christ, you come with this name called to have now fixed peculiar. You ugly, you weird, you stupid, you dumb. You fat, you took a skin, you big nose. You nappy rule. You be faith. Study the Lord with you. I call for value affirmation. And value validation. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people that have put me to it. I can't stop for the day. I know I'm going to mess up again this summer. I just want to get out. I got a vagabond in my feet. I got nastiness in my hands, and my imagination is perverted always. I'm in love with oral sex. I'm in love with being with other people's husbands. I'm in love. Thank God the clubs are back. Thank God the drinks are back. Thank God the gatherings are back. I got to get out of here, this house. I got to get out of this. For setting the Lord rebuke you. And Father, I ask that you don't give her over, but let us this day dig about her and dung about her. That she may bring forth fruit. And if she don't bring forth fruit this time, my king, then cut her off. But please, this day, mighty deliverer, mighty king, allow us to dig about her and dung about her. In the name of Jesus. And she feel now the pressure on both temples. From this battle, spiritual battle. We put the blood over ungodly discharges. Unclean discharges associated with a with an abnormal smell. Heal from legions. Heal from herpes. Heal from HIV and AIDS. Heal from rape. Heal from abuse. Heal from false prophecies. You will never be nothing. You will never be blank. You will never be this. You will never be that. Prophesied by parents under the authority of the devil. You will never amount to anything. You're just a piece of this. You're just a piece of that. Say that the Lord rebuke you. And the power of Christ is against you. For he and she is beautifully and wonderfully created and wonderfully and beautifully made. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come against over shyness that, that would dig a hole and hide his and her talent out of fear of failing, out of fear of failing. Rise up in strength in the name of Jesus and in courage. But be thou courageous only and be not afraid. We find post traumatic stress and we take the power from it. Stop acting out, woman. Stop acting out, man. Peace, be still. 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 Now come against broken heart and hurt feelings because of a failed relationship. Because someone made a God out of someone 
and God had to separate it. God had to allow it to be separated. For he is a jealous God, and jealousy is my name. And God called you back to prayer, son. He called you back to worship, daughter. And he have removed the thing that was taking too much of your attention from you. But he is the jealous God, and jealousy is his name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. You find fear of that mother who fearing she's losing hold of her daughter, who fears that she's losing hope of her daughter. And who keeps now speaking in her heart, what they're going to have sex at some point, what they're going to do this at some point, uh, they're going to do that at some point. You find up those thoughts before they are spoken out loud. We lose boldness. In the name of Jesus Christ. I ask for healing in the rectum. In that man's rectum, total healing from sexual penetration. Total separation from it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I lose humility before the Lord have to humble someone. Humble thyself in the presence of the living God. Humble thyself. Please God, humble me. Humble thyself. Humble thyself. Humble thyself. Humble thyself. Humble thyself. With thy pride and pride of heart, humble thyself. In the name of Jesus Christ. Allow humility to be your wife. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands before the Lord. So let the praises go up. 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 Let the blessings come down, King Jesus. Let the praises go up. Let the praises go up. Until someone is sitting clothed in their right mind. And in their right mind. Let the blessings, King, come. Yes, King. We love you. We love you. We love you. Let praise you go up. Let your blessings be. Come down. We need you. We need you. We need you, King Jesus. Let him come now. Send it now. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Let come on, let your praises go up. Now men can't pray. Now women can't pray. But you're free. But you're free. But you're free. I give myself away to free. If 
by the name of Jesus Christ. I give myself from this day forward. So you can use there's always somebody that's always God. Give myself away. And we give ourselves away. But we no longer. I give myself away. When the enemy who's standing so in the corner can and wait for a more opportune time. I give myself when he presents himself. He will be faced with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I give myself away. And we will no longer so deal with him by ourselves. And in our own mind. And in our own emotions. What would happen so we give ourselves away. Generation embrace this. That he must now deal with our he Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. That he must now deal with you and no longer deal with me. That he must immediately be faced with you. That he must immediately be faced with your power and your presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, no more I, no more me. No more we, no more us, but you. My life does not belong to me. Let the blood be on the door door. No. Let the blood be over the car. Let the door be over every window and every door. Let the blood be over every heart and every mind and every hand and every and, let, and every heart. Let the blood be over the torso. Let the blood be over the private part. Let the blood be over the kidneys and the lungs. Let the blood be over the thyroid. Let the blood be on both temples and over the mind. Let the blood over the eye gate and the mouth gate and the ear gate. Let the blood let the blood prevail. Let the blood prevail. And we speak as those that I delivered. That we shall be well this summer. That we shall be well in our health. That we shall be well in our finances. That we shall be well in the name of Jesus. Because we have given ourselves away. And we've taken time to give ourselves away. And we have not rushed you to give ourselves away. But now you are clean through the word which is free. Sanctified. Lay hold. We will not announce after this service that my mind is messed up. That my mind is broken. That my mind needs healing. My mind is healed. My mind is free. My mind is in you. I lift this mind that was in Christ now be in me. If you seek to make this a bold in me. And let this mind be in me also in Christ Jesus. Now keep your mouth and think. What's true and what's not true. Let the blood be on your heart. Let the blood be on your mind. 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 Teach me how to think on these things. In the name of Jesus. I'm a willing vessel, a yielded vessel, a broken vessel, a humble vessel. And that's the clay in the hands of the potter. Now form us and shape us into what pleases you. Grow someone's mind with this godly transformation. Blow someone's family mind with how you are transforming that daughter, transforming that son, transforming that daughter-in-law, transforming that son-in-law. Blow someone's mind when they look that they have to reverence you because of, of what they see you doing in that person. As the people were, were full of reverence when they saw the man sitting clothed and in his right mind. In the name of Jesus. To you I belong. Announcing to you I belong. I give myself. I don't give myself a way to die. I give myself a way to, to, to be used. That's the only way I know how to say thank you. Is, is to be an instrument in your hands. 
a willing instrument, a ready instrument to use at, at your leisure. And know you not that your body is not your own, but the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you have been purchased with, with a price, and your body is not your own. In the name of Jesus. So thank you, Lord, we pray. Come on, be close to someone and wrap your arms around them. If you hear someone, throw your arms around them. Anyone, put them in your arms. And let anointing match anointing. Let anointing meet anointing, not match but meet. But let the presence of the Lord meet the presence of the Lord. Kiss your son's forehead, daddy. Kiss your daughter's forehead, mother. Kiss your daughter's forehead, daddy. Kiss your son's forehead, mother. In the name of Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. You have to do.